Is it connected to my shit? It's nope. a whole new screen. Oh, it's back on there. It's a whole new screen. Yeah, it's a whole new screen. Yeah, I think it might be a, it's a whole new screen, right? <laughs> 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 Alright, you want me to finish in the chair, Maya? Yeah, you gonna you gonna pick up where you left off. All right, cool. So this is the last sentence you said. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse. I'll just start at four again. It says, and I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, save the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So this is a promise, man. We don't, we don't, we don't trust in men. We trust in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And, and Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai said he was going to give us men. He was going to give us shepherds. Teachers, watchmen, all right, pastors, according to his own heart, that would be set up over us to feed us and not leave us lacking. And that happened through the spirit, man. All right. Verse verse five. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And that's what this, this world, this earth is lacking, is ex is lacking ex uh execution of judgment all right it's lacking righteousness but that's what Yahweh Shai is coming back to bring man he's coming back to bring righteousness he's back to, he's coming back to set up a new heaven and a new earth for in well of righteousness verse 7 it says therefore behold the days come saith the lord Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai that they shall no more say the lord liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt so like yeah um I skip verse six. Let me read verse six. It says, in, in his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And, and this is his name whereby he, shall, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel. It's all about the seed. It doesn't matter about your appearance, man. It go. It's all determined off of the seed line. The word seed is the Greek word sperma, which is the word sperm. It comes from men. All right, so it's about your forefathers. That's what your lineage is uh, determined off of. Your race, your nationality is determined off of the seed of your forefather, man, or the seed of your father. Even um, in science, all right, the uh, the gender of the child is determined off of, uh, uh, off of the, the male's um, sperm. All right, it has the X and the Y chromosome. A woman, she only has Y chromosome, man. So that shows you it all goes back to the man. It says, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. This talking about this modern day Egypt being destroyed, man. All right. Because once this modern day Egypt is destroyed, the Lord is going to uh, deliver us from the four corners of the earth where we've been scattered. And he's going to place us into our own land. And it said when he places us into our own land, we're going to dwell safely. Them people in Israel right now ain't dwelling safely. There's war over there showing you they don't they don't fit the prophecy of the true chosen people. All right. Which makes them bastards, which makes them frauds. All right. He said, uh, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Man, the Lord's going to rain fire and brimstone upon the land of Israel also, man. Why? Because the people that's in that land is not supposed to be there. Why? Because he's about to give that land back to us and he's not about to give it back to us in the state that it's in right now with them kosher pig being eaten. Uh, uh, new beaches, uh, uh, the biggest sodom sodomite parades going on in there, man. No, the Lord got to clean all that land out, man, right. so that we can move in. Matt, it's called Jubilee. <laughs> uh, fucking sick, man. Mm -hmm. That's what. Right, spell J E W. Jubilee. That's what everybody who don't know. Right. Uh, that's pretty much it on that, though. The main point was the shepherds, multiple shepherds. But I still got Ephesians. Plus, I mean, yeah, we jump back to that. That's I, why I, I, Isaiah 30 says, what? Then the, uh, the eye shall see thy teachers. They shall not be removed into a corner anymore. And that's why the Proverbs 5 goes into what? How, how have I hated instructions? And how have I not listened to my teachers, man? Yeah. 
because the prophets are here to edify, to build up in order for each one of us to be able to stand in our faith when that time comes, man. That's why Ephesians, what's that, the sixth chapter? It says, having done all to stand, put on the whole armor, man. That's, that, that's what we're doing to each other, man. Warring yeah. each other. Like, look, war is coming, man. So look, you see me? You see me getting sharpening my sword? You see me preparing my armor? You see me with my breastplate, my helmet, my feet shot? You should be doing the same things, man. Right. You know? Also, anything that I see you don't that you don't have, oh, brother, you can't forget your shield. Oh, brother, you can't forget your helmet. You know, and vice versa. That's what we all here for. We all together going to, we, we all the same body. Spiritually, we going to war with this place. So we got to make sure each and every one of us is is, is uh, uh, trained and ready to go. All right. You got to get second Maccabees 15. His brother put that on deck. Second Timothy 3 and 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, has been assured of, knowing the things thou hast learned, you got to be taught. All right. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach Yahushai. So increasing in the wisdom, all right, uh, is, is, a, is a part of the salvation. All right, it says it makes you wise to salvation, right? All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All right, so you're going to be taught and uh, given a proper understanding, the proper guidance of the scriptures. And here's the point that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's like man said, after all the things, you're going to be thoroughly furnished. You're going to have a decked out career, man. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hey, uh, in that first Timothy we started out, we was reading. If we continue to read God, uh, Timothy uh, pretty much exhorted, not Timothy, uh, uh, Paul exhorted Timothy by saying, like, look, these prophecies that was talking about the men waking up, that was talking about the men going out and teaching, these prophets, these pastors that standing up. Paul was like, look, those prophecies are talking about you. That you, through a good wolf, uh, uh, can, can we get that, Bob Shah? Jump back to First Timothy one, and so like I gotta give you the, uh, the verse. First Timothy one and eighteen. It's First Timothy chapter one and verse eighteen. It says, "This charge I committed to thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee." Right. He said, "According to the prophecies which went which went before on thee." So he's saying, "Look, these prophecies are talking about what you man." Same thing, we got to have that mindset that these prophecies are speaking about us. So in, in, instill that to brothers and let them know, look, when the scriptures, Jeremiah 28 and 8, that's talking about us, brothers. The Jeremiah 3 and 15, not only is that talking about the apostles, uh, but that's talking about us, brothers, as well, standing, uh, coming in the stead, man. We are looked at as those uh, shepherds, those pastors as well. Because we're out there watching the clock. We're out there uh, standing on the tower. We're out there putting together these lessons, man. It says that how I've not studied for myself only, but for all those that seek learning, for all those that seek wisdom. Uh, you want to hit it? <clears throat> this is uh, this is rock, uh, 24 and 34. It says, Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. That's it, man. You know? So, so, so we, the, it, uh, the brothers quoted the scripture, I believe it's Proverbs 11. It says, he that watereth, watereth also himself, man. So when I'm learning, I'm building myself up. That's in turn uh, to build the next brother up, man. That's charity. Hey, it says, um, the Lord will not forget your labor of love. But charity means love. And it says, um, charity edify you. you know? Another scripture says, charity edify you. Right, that's, right. That's charity, man. But, uh, the one where it uh, says, knowledge puffeth up. But charity, the latter part of that, is, like you said, it's right. Safe. The charity, yes, because you can have knowledge and people like to show wisdom off and great wisdom and words. And so, I talk about that, talk about that man is hated. Somebody just say, Why I should just so they can be like, I'm smart. No, nah, man, charity edifies, man. We're doing this stuff out of love, man. All right, love your neighbor, you love thyself. The way we want the salvation for ourselves, that's what we want for our brother, man, for our neighbor. All right, so we edify, man. We build each other up so we can become that full statue, you know, right. I believe it's the same one you quoted. It speaks about how a man is uh, wise to others, mm -hmm. but he's not wise unto himself, man. Profitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The water, the water. He's not profitable. He's profitable to others, but not profitable unto himself. First and foremost, man, we got to be profitable unto ourselves within this knowledge. 
because I can't tell the brother to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z if I'm not doing it first and foremost, man. You know? And that's a that's that's the totality of the edification, man, the love, this labor that we're putting forth. You want to jump back to Timothy? Um, this is uh Timothy chapter one and verse 18. It says, uh, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went on before thee, mm -hmm. before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. That thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So how do we war a good warfare, man? It's, it's through these scriptures. When Satan came and tempted Yahweh Shah, what did Yahweh Shah uh, um, um, combat him with? With the word, he combated him with understanding, man. So it's the same thing that we're doing through the spirit. Giving each other these words, these, 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 these uh, um, 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 prophecies that we can war by them, man. Meaning we can stand and have faith that these things are faithful and true, you know? It says, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. This is concerning uh, uh, putting away, man, have, have shipwreck, you know? But that's, that goes into those guys that draw back, man. We are not of them that draw back, but we are of them uh, that lead to the saving of the soul. And that's what? To the edification of the body, man. You know, I just had a, a scripture in my head. Hey, uh, I'm to say this. The scriptures say what? They're, they're going to call us to repair our breaches and to restore our passive blood. You know, how, how can we be called that? We're not edifying. We're not built. You know, you got to make sure that, that we're doing it in the right spirit and for the right purpose, you know? Yeah. Say, so be hey, careful how you build. I was going to say that. I was, I was going to quote uh, Ezekiel. 13, if I'm not mistaken, we quoted it earlier, but I'm um, quote the part about a uh, untempered motor, man. You don't, you don't, you. Yeah, this is a. Uh... This is Ezekiel 13. Ten. And 10. This is because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, and others. Others adopted with untempered mortar. Say unto them which adopted with untempered mortar that it shall fall. Mm -hmm. they, they and the mortar is what you use, like uh, when you got a brick, a brick, brick house. You know, you, you see, you see the, the the sticky shit that's in between each brick. That's supposed to be the mortar, man. And the mortar is supposed to what harden, so 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 the brick sticks together. But that said, it's untempered. So basically, it never gets hard, man. It's just gooey and gummy, and you can just knock over that goddamn wall, man. It says that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower. O ye, O great hail, O great hailstone shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Yep. So when the wind, when what? When affliction come, man, that wall that you built, your, your so-called protection, <laughs> hey, it, it ain't gonna be there, you know. That's why it's important that we edify according to what the spirit of Yahweh by Shami Yahushai. What did the Lord say? He that uh, built this house upon a rock. So when that when that flood come, when those winds blow, it's going to beat upon that house, but the house will still stand there. Why? Because it's founded upon that rock, which means what? It's built upon our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. The right way, going through the straight gate, one way, one faith, you know? It says, uh, lo, when the wall is falling, shall it, shall it not be said unto you, where is a dog being where thou hast died? Therefore, thus say Yahweh power, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger, and great hailstones in the fury to consume. And, and it's the importance of getting this while, it, while, while it's hot right now, man. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. We use the scripture a lot to talk about what? False prophets. But this can go into a guy that, 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 that's watching, following Great Millstone. He, oh, I believe Great Millstone is the men of the Lord. They got 100% truth, but yet you sitting on your ass not applying the things that, 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 that's being taught. You look at it as entertainment. Oh, who, who, who they getting on today? You gonna, that, that, that's going to be untempered martyr as well, because now when affliction comes, when it's time for you to utilize the wisdom that you was supposed to have been learning this whole time, what happens? Now you ain't got it. Now you don't know how to maneuver in this present evil world. Why? Because you thought it was a game, man. So now when it's martial law in the streets, now, now you want to know oh, where it was made at. What am I supposed to do in a time like this? Well, if you was listening the whole time, 
If you was building up your spirit, you would know what to do when 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 when, when, when these things come upon the earth, man. Right? It says, "So when I break down the wall that you have died with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall." And ye shall be consumed in the midst of them, and ye shall know that I am the help. Mm. Back in Ephesians chapter 4, and verse, I'll start at verse 12 again. It says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Mashiach Yahweh till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. So we all got a measure to me. Yeah. Yep. That we, and that's the point of not worrying about another man's measure. It's about worrying about your measure, flipping your talents, man. As long as you get your talents flip, everything is going. Even if you have less talents than another brother, man, he has to worry about flipping his talents. You got to worry about flipping your talents, man. So focus on better in yourself man and in doing that you'll be able to better others around you right it says verse 14 it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive and that's the purpose now what, now what it says in uh second corinthians 10 it says that uh, uh the weapons of our warfare are not kind of carnal but, but spiritual to so the pulling down the strongholds man so that's what we're doing. Like th 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 this word is meant to what? To pull down strongholds. What's that Proverbs one? Brother can hold that as well. It says what? To teach subtility unto the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. This is what we're learning to maneuver in this present evil world and how to walk in the spirit. So what? So you don't be as children tossed to and fro with every uh, 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 wind of doctrine by the mm -hmm. sight of men. So you can know what is that good and acceptable will of the heavenly father that we, uh, that we quoted earlier in Romans the, uh, the 12th chapter. And that's the point of getting rooted because it talks about the winds came and beat upon the house and the great was the fall of it. And the winds is, you know, uh, physical uh, trials and tribulations, but even spiritual, man. It just said every wind of doctrine, even these different doctrines coming out, man. If you root it, you won't be moved. But if you're not root it, you'll be questioning everything you ever taught, uh, that you ever learned, man. That's why it's important to get rooted and make sure you're being fully assured of the things that you are learning, man. That way, when these different fucking wayward ass doctrines come out, you know how to stand on them, man. That's why a lot of uh, Jake shouldn't even be watching a whole bunch of different videos, man. Watching every camp under this. You watching I I O G C and I O G and Elemental. You watching every camp, and then you and you don't you're not getting edified. Yes, you know you're an Israelite, but you're not getting nowhere. Right. Says so have one council. Says being peaceful man, but have one council. Come, come. That goes back to the Romans 16, 16 brothers quoted. Mm -hmm. All right, mark them which cause divisions contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, man, and avoid them. So Paul straight up told him, like, look, avoid these other doctrines. Avoid going into listening to all these other guys because it's only going to bring forth confusion and you're going to be stable in the correct doctrine. Right. And just to, uh, to go back and quote uh, that Proverbs 10 that uh, the Spirit had me bring out, uh, it said that um, the latter end of it, I'm going to just get it because I still got it done. All right, going back to what you had said, it says, Proverbs 10 and 21, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom, for lack of wisdom. All right. So like the brothers were saying, hey, the scriptures uh, tell us to be a hearer of the word or be a doer of the word, not if you are only deceiving your own self, man. Are right, you would deceive yourself thinking you agree with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm with what y'all saying and this and that and the third. But if you are actually putting in the efforts to uh, examine yourself and, and apply the scriptures, see what you aren't applying and then make changes and so on and so forth continuing that building process all right you're going to be one of those men that lack wisdom where the scriptures talk about the foolish virgins man all right that didn't have the oil okay we don't want to be accounted with that those men that don't have the oil that didn't actually store up wisdom knowledge and understanding man but i got that proverbs you want me to hit that? yeah all right come Pro proverbs uh one in uh verse four sorry look and one it says the proverbs of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, to give subtility to the simple, 
to the young man knowledge and discretion. He said what to give subtility unto the simple. Now, when you go into the word simple, it goes into open mindedness. Yeah. So this word is meant to what, man? A to close your mind and let you know that there is only one way, one faith, one path. There's one understanding. Right? Go ahead. It says uh verse six to understand or verse five, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Mm -hmm. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. And what's the counsels, man? It's the scriptures, you know? And it's the teacher of the scriptures, man. But the, uh, in the book of Psalms, uh, King David said, thy testimonies are my counselors. So, so, so this word, this Bible, and the men who are teaching it, those are the counsels of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. It says, to understand the proverb <coughs> and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. From there, the Bible will start to jump to Proverbs 22 and um, start at uh, 17. This is Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise. Right, because he said what? To give subtility unto the simple, man. right? To the to the young men, knowledge and discretion. Basically, what? what, what to teach you words of wisdom. Go ahead. And apply thine heart unto my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mean use. The word apply means put to use. Go ahead. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips, mm -hmm. that thy trust may be in Yahweh. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? See? It seems like you know what the counsels is right there, right? Go ahead. That I may that I might make thee know. The certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Exactly, yes. Like it says, be ready to give an uh, answer to every man that asks ask if you the hope that's within you, man. So we, so we, these words of truth, we are fully persuaded of that these things are able to deliver us, man. And that's why we're putting in the effort to what to to, to edify ourselves and to edify the brotherhood through the word. You know, so you know what I'm saying? No, we just, I have we just put it. Uh, First Peter three and fifteen it says, "But sanctify Yahweh in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of a hope that is in you." And that's edification, you know. Because if he come ask you, well, why do you believe that? Well, I'm gonna go to the scriptures and show. It says, "If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles that we read earlier." I'm gonna go to the scriptures and show you why I believe in what I believe in, you know. Because I'm, I'm showing you the words of truth, like like. He Solomon said, so you can know the certainty of the words of truth, man. You know, and that's true edification, that's true brotherly love. You know, Let's back that up. Uh, Proverbs 15 and 28 The heart of the righteous study it to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. You know, okay, a, a righteous is gonna want to, he's gonna want to be able to feed the flock correctly. You know, hey, but the wicked is just gonna want uh, wiggle to see whatever comes out of that. Mm -hmm. You uh, jump over Proverbs 14 and 15. It says, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his goings. Just backing up what the brother was saying, too, and the definition of that word simple means to be open minded, all right, easily persuaded. You know, the simple believeth every word. That's what our scripture says in the book of 1 John, real quick. 1 John chapter 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of the most high. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. So it says what? We have to try the spirit by the spirit. Meaning that what? What somebody else is saying, what somebody's saying, go back into the scriptures, which is the spirit, St. John 6 and 63. All right. Go back into the scriptures and see if it's lining up. And that's what we do. And as shepherds, we're supposed to do that. Okay. He's saying this. Well, that's not what the scripture says here. That's not what it says there. Yeah. All right. He's lying. And feed and warn the flock. That's watchmen. Because the watchman watches for the wolf. So you see the wolf, so you like, oh man, that nigga's a wolf. So you warn a flock, like, look, that's a wolf. The things he's saying is not according to what, you know what I'm saying, the, the spirit is saying, man. You know, and that's how we know guys are hirelings. That's how we know guys are wolves. That's right, that's right. This is back in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. It says that we henceforth be no more children. It says be, uh, and understanding be men, you know, 
It says that ye henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Mashiach Yahushai, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every, every joint supplieth. Key thing, every, so the whole body is working together yeah. for the edification, man. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. like during the time of uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, you know, when uh, they were uh, rebuilding the temple, they were rebuilding the walls. Everybody's giving money. Mm -hmm. During the time of uh, 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 the Maccabees, mm -hmm. when, when when the temple was defiled, what did they have to do? They had to rededicate the temple, man. They got rid of the uh, those, those dirty old old stones that was a part of the altar. They went and got whole new stones, man, and made a new altar and cleansed the temple. They were all what 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 one mind to the work, man. It's the same thing that we're doing today, man, but in the spirit. Right, and them altars are signs of uh, us being joined back to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, the peak, our peak as a nation was when um, King Solomon was in rulership and he had an altar. You know, so in these last days, the third altar is being built in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter, the 19th verse. It says that the Lord will uh, make an altar in Egypt and the altar is, is us. We're the altar. All right. What do you do on the altar? You make sacrifices. Uh, Romans 12 and uh, uh, Romans, the 12th chapter, it says, present your body a living sacrifice. So we are the altar, man. And the Lord said he will send uh the, the, they will cry by reason of the oppressor, and he'll send them send them a savior and a great one, man. So our savior is on the way, man. He sees our sacrifices being ourselves, man. He hears our prayer, all right, our supplication, man. All right, he's accepting our fast, okay. He's acknowledging our groaning and our mourning, and he's come, and he's sending his savior, being our shine, the only begotten son. He's coming to deliver the ones that are signing and crying, man, that are mourning, that are weeping, man. All right. Hey, well, every time a righteous king came into rulership, what did he do? You know, he he, he renewed the altar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, tore down the groves and all the other things, and and, and, and renewed the altar of the Lord. Right? right, and that's what Josiah did. He said Josiah had great pleasure in the name of the Lord. But we doing the same thing that Josiah did uh, spiritually. All right, we doing the same thing he did spiritually. So, Lord willing, our name is going to be uh uh um. Pleasant in the ears of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh as as a sweet savior, all right. It, it, you know, Lord willing, our names is is uh, held in high esteem and, and has and we have a good name. It says a good name is uh, better than precious oil, man. All right, so Lord willing, hey, when the, when our name comes up in the heaven, it put smiles on Yahweh by Shem Yahweh face, man. It put a smile on all the angels' face, man. Like he down there doing his job, man. All right, so it says. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted, fitly joined together, joined together perfectly, man. Uh, uh, these other so-called unity camps, they're they not fitly joined together, man. It's a whole bunch of different pieces. It's like they went to a junkyard, man, grabbed a whole bunch of different pieces, put it on wheels, and called it a car, man. All right, that motherfucker breaking down as soon as you leave the parking lot. All right, that's that's what the unity camps is because the, the, the pieces don't mix. The, piece, the pieces don't match, man. You got one dude talking about this topic, and you got another dude saying that's not what that's talking about. The whole, they whole so-called uh, camp is uh, is divided. All right, you just got three right arms. Right, right. Like, like nigga, no, nigga. <laughs> it's like Mr. Potato Head when you rebuilt the nigga. He, he, the mouth is on the eye, the eye is on the mouth. Like everything is out of order with that. You know, but go ahead. So like Proverbs twenty-five and um, eleven. <laughs> a, a word fairly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. All right, so you got a picture of it, man. It says gold and a picture of gold. Mm -hmm. uh, you got gold apples basically sitting in a silver frame. You know, that's glorious, man, but that's what fit words are, man. Mm -hmm. All right, not a bunch of people coming together with different doctrines. All right, not on the same page. All right, can't be reproved because they all believe different stuff. All right, they say it's uh, better to hear the uh, reproof of the righteous than to hear the song of fools. Mm -hmm. That's, That's why, the song of fools that, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why the Psalms 130 1 says how pleasant is for brethren to dwell together good. Uh -huh. Where's that unity start with? With the doctrine speaking. Right. That same might have that same judgment. Right. It's like Ephesians 4 and 16, it says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, 
make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And that's what it's about, man. That's what we're called to do. You know, it says make it increase to the uh, to the building of itself in love, man. That's what Peter wrote about in 2 Peter, the third chapter, the last verse. He said, we grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord, uh, Yahweh Shad, man. So, that, so that's what it's about, man. Furtherance of the body, furtherance of each one of our faith, furtherance in each one of our growth, you know, individually and as a body, as a unit. Go on. God, it says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Yahweh through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. With greediness. So the Lord is telling us to put away that old lifestyle and don't conduct ourselves how these niggas in the world conduct themselves, man. It says, uh, who, uh, verse 20, it says, but ye have not so learned Mashiach, if so be that ye have learned him and have been taught by him as the truth in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. So if you're really in the spirit of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, you should see growth within yourself, change within yourself. You shouldn't be acting the same way you was acting when you first came into the truth, it should be a constant growth process, man. Putting off things that we uh, obtain from the world. It says uh, that she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And like the brother said, when uh, righteous kings would come into rulership, they'll go and they'll clean the temple up. They'll take out the old stones and they'll put new stones in it. Well, that's the same thing that we got to do with our uh, spiritual temple, man. We got to Take the things that's unprofitable, take it out, and add things that are profitable, man. All right? Sp uh, proverbially speaking, verse 23, it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that's what Yahweh Shai was talking about in John, the third chapter, when he was speaking to um, Nicodemus, when he said you have to be born again. He's saying that you have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It says, And that you put on the new man, which after Yahweh is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh, I'm going to just jump to the point that I wanted. Um, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So that's that. We try, we're here to edify, all right? We're not here to entertain. Right? We're not here for a thousand. Becky, uh, Becky the Edomite comes up and gets spiritually slaughtered. With three swords in her back, walks away limping. We not we not here for for the big ass, you know, thumbnail. They want you to click on the video so it can it, it get some. We not here for none of that, man. We here to edify the elect, man. Like Paul say, say I do all things for the elect. Say Yahusha said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. When we go into that word, world is the Greek word cosmos, which means the rest of the nation of Israel. He only praying for his elect. That's who he's coming back to save. Matthew's the twenty fourth chapter, man. And in the book of Wisdom, I think it's Wisdom of Solomon or the Sirach. It says that the Lord careth for his elect. All right. That's who he cares for. And, that, and if we have the same mind of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that's who we have to be focused on. That's who we have to care about. The Lord not coming back to save all of Israel, man. He's not coming back to save a nigga that's just entertained off this truth, man. He's coming back to save the ones that's taking heed unto his words. All right. That's not despising his counsel. That's putting off the old man and putting on the new man in Yahweh. I show me I was shy. All right, but that's it on that. Uh, that's the that's it on our Ephesians. Yeah, it might be. Again, start to wind down and taking it as a little precepts. It says Second Maccabees fifteen and seven. It says, but Maccabeus uh, had ever sure confidence that the Lord Yahweh would help him. Wherefore he it's exhorted. The same thing as us, you know. And it says he exhorted his men. So 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 it goes into being that shepherd. It goes into being that leader. Having that confidence, having that faith that the Lord, hey, 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 he got us, man. And, and, and that's what you instill uh, into the sheep. Knowing that Yahweh got us, man. Okay. It says, um, <laughs> verse 8, wherefore he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember the help which is in former times uh, that they had received from heaven. In, in today's terms, how do we, how do, we do that? 
Romans 15 and 4, the things that are written in the are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Isaiah 34 says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Job 8 and 8 says, Prepare thyself for the search of thy fathers, man. So we go into the former times and we can see the help that our forefathers received through what? Through the scriptures. Go ahead. And not to expect the victory in aid. Which... Just like how the Most High helped our forefathers, our righteous forefathers, man, we can expect that same victory in aid, man. We can expect the same thing. The Lord said, look at the generations of old and see. Go ahead. Which should come unto uh, them from the Almighty. And so comf uh, comfort them out of the law and the prophets. And what did he do? Uh, he comforted them comfort. out of the law and the prophets. Man, this is our comforter. This is how we edify. This is how we build. This is how we strengthen the feeble knees. And just like in uh, like before on television before a big game, you know, they give this big wild speech that just gets everybody inspired to go out there and, and put it all on the line on the field or whatever the case may be. Well, it's the same thing with uh, with our uh, scriptures, with our history, man. But the only thing is, is those words are just cupped up words that, that don't hold any weight. These things are things that are actually happening. We can stand upon these words and know for a fact that we're going to receive the victory. You know, we know that we have a higher power that's backing us, man. It says uh, in Second Maccabees fifteen and nine, and uh, and so comforting them out of the law and the prophets, and withal putting them in the mind of the battle that they won't uh, that they won afford. He made them more cheerful. Right. You know. So he said, "Look, remember the battles that the Lord uh, allowed us to win before." And it's the same thing. You know, you can ask each brother, hey, go back, go back to your journey that you've been in the faith. Have you been in a situation where you know for a fact the Lord delivered you and he helped you and he prospered your way? You, hey, hey, the Lord will not forsake us, man. So remember how the Lord uh, delivered us before. Remember the journey that the Lord put us on, man. It says that the Lord has not appointed us to destruction, but of salvation. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture in Thessalonians. Go ahead. Verse 10. And when he had stirred up their minds. He gave them their ch their charge. He stirred up their minds. How do you do that? Through the word, man. You know, through our heritage. Go ahead. Showing them uh, there with all the falsehood of the heathen and the uh, breach of oath. Right. And we can do that, too. Go into Scripture, Psalms 83. See how these whole ass niggas fucked us over, man. Continuously, time and time again, in the uh, same book of uh, 1 Maccabees. It says, what nation have not had a part in their kingdom and gotten a verse for during that time, it's, it's an account in that time when uh, 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 the Greeks took us down, all those fucking heathens round about, they came to buy uh, 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 slaves of our uh, 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 men, women, and children, man. That's recorded history, uh, you know? They, they they sought for, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh what? Israel right. slave? They not even shit. conquered yet. They came to purchase us if we lost the battle. Right. Okay. <laughs> You know, and that's why it's in Revelation 11, it says they rejoice, man. They send gifts one to another. They rejoice at our downfall, man. It's the same thing they're doing today, you know. But Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with def a defense of shields and spears as with comfortable and good words. Right. So it says uh, he didn't arm them, even though they had weapons. But he didn't arm them with, 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 with spears and, and shields and swords. It says as much as with comfortable words so that's what he armed him with man that, that that's what you have told peter he says satan desired to send you as weak i have prayed for thy faith when mm -hmm. thou converted strengthen thy brother you know uh exhorting one another what today they call today man to keep going man to endure you know remind each other each other about the battles you know remind each other about the faith of the lord as the spirit of caleb all right one of the only two men that was able to see the land of israel that escaped out of egypt all right, the other man came and was speaking fear, like, we can't take down this nation. The giants killed him said, look, the Lord got us. He said, the land is ours. We're going to get this land, man. The same story we got to have, man. You know, uh, uh, story, like the brother quoted it, man. Uh, he quoted the Hebrews, but it's an Isaiah as well, man. Step in the weak hands and the feeble knees, man. All right, tell Jerusalem, hey, the Lord is a guide unto them that keep his commandments. Not your sins will you down. He fight. Who has been confounded at, at that trust in the Lord? Yeah. You know? And, and like I said, he armed every one of them with comfortable words. And that's how you are. We quoted earlier Ephesians, the sixth chapter, about the putting on the, the whole armor of the Lord. This is how we arm one another, man. 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. This is how we get the victory. It's through our faith in what? In, in this knowledge, man. You know? Second commandments 15 and 11. Thus he armed every one of them, not much with defensive shields and spears, as com uh, was comfortable in good words. He says, besides that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed. And if, that, if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. Meaning they rejoiced greatly off this vision that uh, Judas had, man. The Lord gave him a vision, the Lord gave him a dream, and he told it to the men. And it, and it, and it rejoiced them greatly. Well, it's the same thing as us, man. We all, we, we're, we're all, all blessed to see the vision that the Lord has, has given us. And what's that? The kingdom of heaven. We all know about the vision that uh, Ezra received. We all know about the vision that John received. We all can can, can picture and, and see that vision within our spirit, man. Use that as motivation. That should greatly rejoice you. Knowing that if we continue to do what we're doing and we're walking on this path, man, hey, hey, we're going to get a crown from the Lord's hand, man. He's going to he's going to physically place a crown upon our heads, man. The King of Kings and the Lords of Lords, man. He's going to place a crown upon your head and he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That vision right there. You know, should, 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 should nothing stand in your way. They're just just picturing that, you know, and I'm speaking for, for myself personally, you know, but I, I, I believe I can speak for all the brothers, man. Knowing that they're just to please you, how about Shami Yamashai? Knowing that what you're doing is pleasing the creator of, of all things, man. Here it is. It says that he's angry with the wicked every day. There's all kind of chaos and wickedness going on all over the world. But yet when when, when, when one of us send up a prayer or when one of us uh, help one of us out or, or when we hit the highways and hedges, or when we do this, these sit down lessons, man, that's a, that's a, that's a sweet savor unto the Lord right there, man. And then, then he's able to sit back and actually... It's like you've been smelling shit all goddamn day, and all of a sudden you just got a whip of frankincense and mirth, you know? You watch a fucking filth all goddamn day, you know what I'm saying? You seeing goddamn hobbies all everywhere, motherfucking just horrible sight. The next thing you know, you see this beautiful woman walking, gorgeous, man. Like it says, the beauty of a woman cheer at the continent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's like the Lord, uh, you know, you know, with, with our works, you know. Second Maccabees 15 and, um, and 12. And this was his vision that Onias, who has uh, been high priest, uh, a virtuous and good man, uh, reverend in conversation, uh, Gentile in condition, well spoken also, and exercised from a child in all points of virtue, holding up his hands, prayed for the whole body. Of the Jews. Mm -hmm. So he's explaining the uh, dream that Judas had, right? Go ahead. This done in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hairs and exceedingly glorious, who was of the wonderful and exceedingly majest majestic, um, majesty, Salakia. Then Onias uh, answered, saying, This is a lover of the brethren who prayeth uh, much for the people mm -hmm. and for the holy city. To wit, uh, Jer uh, Jeremiah the prophet is the most high. Right, right. So Judas is seeing Jeremiah in his in his in his vision. <laughs> you know, and, and and through the spirit, we're all hoping to be Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the first chapter, I formed thee in the belly. You know, uh, I, I knew before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Man, if we're a part of that number, we all got, we all born of the Holy Spirit, just like Jeremiah, man. So these characteristics that Jeremiah have within his vision, he's a lover of the brethren, praying much for the body, man. It's the same thing. That means what? He did a lot for the edification, for the building of the body, man. The same thing as us. Go ahead. Whereupon uh, Jeremiah, holding forth his right hand, gave to Judas a sword of gold, and in giving it, spake thus, uh, take this holy sword and give from the most high, which uh, the which uh, thou shalt wound the adversaries. Ooh. With the which thou shalt wound the adversaries, man. And we got that golden sword through the spirit. It's called what? The sword of the spirit, man, in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. It says that the, uh, the word of the most high is quick and powerful. Okay. 
This is uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And, uh, and, and if I'm not mistaken, that word powerful goes back into uh, the Greek word in, in, in or jail or whatever, which goes into energy, man. <clears throat> It's of the Lord that gives us the energy, the strength, the endurance to continue to push and, 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 and continue to uh, go through the things we do. I would say, I would have fainted if I have not uh, believed in um, mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. man. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, man. That is our faith that keeps us going. And it's not even the, it's, the faith was given to us. So ultimately, it all comes down to the Lord that's allowing us to get through every week, you know, to get through every day. And it's a blessing. To, to still have the Holy Spirit upon us, you know. God. And you know, in the in the second Maccabees, it says that they were that they were strengthened, right? That he gave them that courage, you no, know, uh, uh, about that vision, man, and how much more believing, you know, be, being part of the hopeful elect. And if we, we are a part of the elect, hey yeah, how should I pray for us? You know, he said, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but th them that thou has given me out of the uh, uh out of the world, you know. God and scripture say the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. much most righteous. This man was Yahweh Shai, you know what I'm saying? To ever touch the surface, it was Yahweh Shai. So if he's praying for us, how much does that avail? How much power does that have? How much force does that have if he's praying for us? You know, right. He's on our side, you know? To think that the Lord prays for you just to be able to give you that crown. Right. Right. It says, uh, for the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart they go on real quick going back to that uh <clears throat> that vision is uh proverbs 29 oh, man. uh where there is no vision what is that? Uh, people fail which perish about 20, 20, 20, 25 and 3 something So, uh, okay, 18. Uh, this Proverbs 29 and 18, it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Going back to that vision, if you don't have no vision, man, you good as dead. But the Lord revealed unto his uh, to us that perfect vision because we can we can see the kingdom, man. We can see that the kingdom is coming unto us, man. So uh, like in the world, they say, what, you got 2020 vision. It's like perfect vision. That's like, hey, we can see it perfectly, man, that the kingdom is coming and and we see it, man. We see the, the, the prophecy speaking. We see all these things coming to pass, which should build up your faith to see that, hey, that the Lord is is, is speeding this, this uh the destruction of this place up, you know. We got the eyes out. In Revelation it says, uh, anoint thyself with eyes out that, that that thou mayest see. You know, so 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 we got the oil, we got the ointment for the eyes to be able to see in the book of Second Peter. Uh, the first chapter, it speaks about a, a, a guy who was lacking the things that Peter was talking about. He was talking about actually his faith, virtue, out, virtue, right. security. Yep. And it said that he that lacketh those things, he couldn't see afar off. Man, man forgot that he was purged. That's he right. Sam was purged. Man. That's right. Hey, there, that's that Corinthians 4, man. Sam, we received this ministry of uh, mercy. We take that. Uh, back in Maccabees. Let me get that in Maccabees. Uh, second Maccabees. Uh, 15 and um well, yeah 16 it says take his holy sword uh and the gift of the most high with uh which thou shalt wound the adversaries thus being well com uh, um, comforted by the words of judas which were very good and able to stir them up uh to valor to valor meaning it charged them up man you know they was ready they was they they, they was ready to, to, to battle and go to war man Okay. And to encourage the hearts of the young men, they determined not to pitch camp, but encouragedly to set upon them and manifold, but, but but courageously and manfully to go try to uh, to try to matter, man. And it's the same thing in our spirit. Man. We can hear these words. We can we, we we get charged up by the spirit of the Lord, man. And it's like what? Hey, 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 who can if the Lord is for us? Who can be against us, man? You know. It says manfully to try the matter by conflict because of the city and the uh, sanctuary and the temple were in danger for the care that they took uh, for their wives and their children and their brethren and kinsfolks was in least account with them. 
but the greatest and principal fear was the holy temple. Was the temple. So they were, were what they think they, they principal uh fight, they principal thought was it, it said that the care that they took for their brethren, their wives, their children was at least compared to what the care that they had for the temple and the same thing through the spirit today, man. You know, the care that we have for what the building of this third temple, man, which we are that temple. Each one of us is a stone within uh, uh within the building. That's why it says the body edifies itself in love, man. That's the most important thing right now is to is, is to preach this word, teach this word, be an example unto your brethren, man. You know, it says what in Romans 10, it says, uh, um, um, uh, can a brother grab that? Romans 10 and 9, I think it is. Um, this is the book of Romans. <clears throat> chapter 10 or maybe 12 i'm sorry hold on it's locked 12 and 10. in romans chapter 12 and verse 10 it says be kindly affectionate one toward another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another right and that preferring in the greek means to uh uh to lead man, yeah. to be an example you know so that's how we prefer one another that's how we how, how we love one another it's about being an example to each other man the youngest brother can be an example by what? By, by by his charity, by his faith, by his diligence, by his conduct, his work ethic. And the same thing goes for, for, for the highest man as well, man. Just, just, just being an example unto each other, because ultimately how it stopped for each and every last one of us. He went before and showed us how to walk. He went before us and showed us how to perform and to do these things, you know? I was just gonna say, they said that uh, they regarded first the, the temple, you know? And like, like the brother said, you know, the brotherhood, you know, we are the temple. It says that uh, no, great, uh, no greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for, for his brother, man. You know, sacrificing those things of, of, the, uh, of paying attention to this word and doing, you know, hey, the, 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 that's the office of the priest is sacrifice, you know. Yeah, but that's all I have to experience. Let it ride, bro. Is 2 uh, Corinthians 4. In 13, it says, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, shall raise up us also by Yahweh Shai and shall present us with you. And, but So just basically saying that, hey, we believe in these words, man, and that's why we're speaking it. So we and we can see that the kingdom is coming. We we speaking on these things because we got one hundred percent faith that these things gonna come to pass, man. And so when the Lord do come, we know, hey, Lord willing, we those men that hey, the, hey He gonna raise us up, you know. So, uh, what is it? Uh, what the fifteen says for all things are for your sakes. So hey, the Lord is coming to give us the kingdom, man. He's giving us. Everything, hey, even Psalms 2 and 8 says he don't give us the heathens for uh, our inheritance, man. So, hey, we, when the Lord come, we can put, uh, uh, know that we got a kingdom coming, man, a righteous kingdom. But that was all about. Hey, I so, got one. Yeah. Uh, Romans 12 and 13. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, 1 Timothy 4. This is 1 Timothy 4 and... Um, 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself holy to them that thy prophet may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And that's the mission. That's the point. You know, saving ourselves and them that hear us. Yeah, well, even up, I think it's up a verse that says, be, uh, Let no man despise thy youth, but be an example to the believers. Right? So we got to walk in those living examples, just like Yahweh Shai was the word made flesh. All right, we're the body of Yahweh Shai, so we have to embody this word to the best of our ability and be an example. We the epistle of Yahweh Shai. Yeah. We read that in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, man. You know? So we're, 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 we're walking embodiments of the word as well. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Yahweh Shai, you know? So with that, man, Lord willing, I was edified. We're going to give all praise. Son and glory to Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Rakhadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel of truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shalom, brethren. Shalom. 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 Shalom.